Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And this one is part three of the restoration of my Jaguar XJ Coupe V12 manual. That's down at Painting Classic Cars at the moment. And you're probably wondering, what on earth have you got this Aston Martin DBX in for? Well, the thing I have to do is decide the color I'm gonna paint my XJ Coupe. It's D-Day basically, because the engine being out, they've all done a lot of prep down there and they need to paint the engine bay. So I've got to decide what colour. And I've been through a whole multitude of colours for this car. Um, the sort of base colour I was going to do is the same colour as the Project 7, it's a British Racing Green Metallic, but I wanted to investigate a different sort of colour. Uh, if I could, I wanted a sort of more olive green colour to sort of, that's what the 70s colours were, but a modern take on it. And I found this Minotaur green colour is a Q colour from Aston Martin, which this DBX is representing here. I phoned up Aston Martin. I said, love the colour Minotaur green. Do you have a car in that colour? They said, we do a DBX and they sent it over and I'm extremely grateful. And now I've seen it, I really like the green, but it's quite a modern colour and it has a flip in it. And sometimes it's black, sometimes it goes a sort of brown colour. And I don't think that will really suit putting on a, um, an XJ Coupe from the 70s. They didn't do this sort of paint and I don't want to do a sort of resto mod sort of look. I want you to think this colour was an original Jaguar colour from the 70s. So they've organised, Keith Parrington down at um, Painting Classic Cars has organised Novel um, is who they use, the paint they use. It's a really slick setup. They've got all sorts of mixes they can do. They've got a technician coming down from Novel. He's, I'm going to take this down to their workshop today and he's going to scan this paint and perhaps take the flip out and perhaps a little bit of the black out so I can get the colour that I saw on the Aston Martin configurator, this green, which I really like. So that's what we're doing today. An update on the car as well. The engine, last time we were down there, part two was taking the engine out, discovered those sort of oil leaks. The engine went off to um, Tom Lenthal Limited, who are Jaguar specialist. Tom rebuilds V12s, um, Jaguars, and does race versions. He does, he's been sending me photographs of the engine in rebuilding. He's got a Lister seven litre XJS there as well. Very experienced in Jaguar V12s. It's been a fabulous experience. There's quite a lot of work already done on the engine um, because we're in a bit of timeline to get everything done. And you, I am gonna do a visit there next week to do a real update on it but it's already looking spectacular. New piston liners have gone in, um, the crank went in yesterday, lots of work to do on that, been done on that engine already. So what I'm gonna do now, jump in this, drive down to Payne Classic Cars, it's down in Eastbourne, it's two or three hours. So the next time you join me, I'll be coming into their workshop and we'll decide what we're gonna do about the paint and just see what stage Keith has got to with the XJ Coupe, because all the paint is off. Good to see you again. My Thanks goodness, so look at that. Look how, much, how much have you done? I mean, you've been sending me those pictures through and it's just been mega, I have to say. You, you Looking at transformed, unbelievable. But yeah, some, some stories to tell there. And I've also brought you a DBX in this monitor green Very that good. I had hoped to paint the XJ Coupe in. Now, the only trouble with this color, it isn't quite as I expected. I like the green, but it very definitely flips to a sort of black colour and I don't really like that. So No, the images yeah. you were sending down, it, it was a lovely green car and yeah. it just turns up and it's, it's yeah. a lovely green car that wants to be black. Yes, it is, it is a pretty stunning colour. We like, we like the colour um, and I'm not quite sure what to do, but you have the man from Novo who does all your paint and things, he's actually down today, isn't he, just to do a sort of measure on it and see what we do with it. Yeah, we, we can take a scan with the spectrometer and work out which bits are flipping it black and work really? out if we can reduce it or, or, or possibly eliminate it completely uh, as an option. Right. Well, we have we have one or two other you know, colours we could use, but I still would like love to see what we could those you know you could do with this if it is possible to imitate it. It's oh. a Q colour from Aston Martin. It's not actually that expensive. It was one thousand nine hundred and fifty pounds extra, which is pretty good for a special colour. And I think it suits the car. And I love the tan interior. But yeah, works that's, fantastically on this. Possibly not. On a yeah, yeah. I don't think so. Not with the the flip colour, but. 
diving into what you found here. Um, yeah, this is what from the photographs I do already know this isn't quite so good this side compared to the other side, but um, it's a bit of an odd one, really. Quite often, you'd find that the the road side, so the left hand side yeah. of the car, will be worse than the right hand side all the way down. Yeah, um, your car's kind of confused us a bit by being really good at the back, yeah, really not so good at the front. <laughs> yes, so most of the damage we found at the back we we knew we knew all yeah. about that going back to the original video when we pointed yeah. out all the areas it's not until you get up to the front and we've taken the engine and gearbox out we've taken all the engine bay and ciliaries out yeah cleaned everything oh yeah well there was one key thing i think that you showed me and that's that area there isn't it that is a bit of a giveaway that this car had a bit of a life early on in its life yeah if, if we look along here yeah. there's a weld joint all the way up here yeah. to there yeah um, and this is a nice shiny blue as opposed to the matte blue back here so it, the front half of the chassis leg has at some point been cut out and replaced um, it would have been quite some time ago right this is a factory panel and right. they've been obsolete for years right so it, it that's happened some time ago yeah so we now know it's had a knock at the front that would explain why the bonnet is in pretty good nick because it was replaced it's not the one it left the factory with no but what's interesting, it, it, it looks like this impact was on this side and it, they didn't replace this side, but it, from your, what you tell me what you found there. I think what's possibly happened is where it's had front impact, the impact has separated a lot of these joins because you can yeah. see the metal work here is made up of many panels. So yes. you've got a top half which is seamed onto the middle section and the chassis leg is seamed onto the lower section. Right. And I think it's, it's just opened up these joints enough to allow moisture and corrosion to yeah. build up yeah um we carried out a few of the repairs um yeah. we, we laid a section in across here no i remember you sent me that photograph of it all cut out here didn't you so yeah we, we're well on our way but we wanted to pause so that you could come down and see yeah interestingly on this side we had the, the chassis yes. leg yes which, so this side. which we're yes. now unpicking yes you had this nice shiny big strong bit of metal that side and you take it away and what a horror it is behind there Oh which dear. again going back to the in initial inspection yeah. um if you look on the passenger side which yeah. is which is currently untouched it looks very strong it all looks good. very strong we can see it's had a repair section in here yeah and they've done a nice job of that and yeah. it's all nice and it all looks great yeah but then if you come to the inside here now that yeah. the engine is removed yeah we can see all this corrosion down here on this joint yeah which is the reverse side obviously of that plate so once you start unpicking that and pull the plate away, yeah. what looks like a good section, which has had a repair in it here anyway, yeah. that looks like a good section. Yeah, but behind it, but behind it's all it, been rusting away. It's all corroding away. Oh. Just while we're at the front, I think the other one you found was on this blessed this, here. Yeah. This nasty here. Now, with the engine in the car, sound heat deadening panel. and heat panel yeah. here. With that removed, you can see that all of this yeah. is swollen and corroded. Oh, that's generally from debris going down the air intake, isn't it? Well, the air there. intake in here, yeah. which is this paddle, which comes all the way down to here. You can see the seam yeah. along there. Um, and the two, they're just swept and corroded. Yeah, what a pain. So, yes, well, should we carry on with the bad yeah. news and carry <laughs> on down this side? The, well, the previous repairs in here, obviously, yeah. we, we saw this quite quickly with the wings removed. Yeah. Um, with this panel off of here, you can see that again, there's a repair oh badly carried out put in here. Yeah. And this repair is quite extensive as a large patch repair. Yeah. So we'll have to get that removed and make sure that the integrity is retained it's in there. Still there. Okay. This back wing, that's given you some headaches as well, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, as we said at the beginning, we kind of knew what we were looking at at the back of the car. The yeah. front's been a surprise, but this is... This is that's a shocker. It is, but we're used to seeing this. Um, this is fairly standard wheel arch repair on on an XJ6. Yeah. Um, the repair panels that you get are commonly this kind of size. Right. Um, it's fair to say it's not been done that well. No. It, there's gaps in the weld. Um, yeah. The repair has corroded before. Right. Because this is all lead work here. God. Well, you showed me the amount of filler. Yeah. Huge amount of filler um, on this. This whole panel here is distorted where the, the heat's not been controlled putting this panel in. It's just yeah. distorted the panel here. Um, and this lower section here, you can see, is just tack welded. 
So there's large gaps in between here. God, where would they be without filler? <laughs> what do you do on something like that? What we'll do is we will cut this panel off all the way across here, straight the way through here. Yeah. Um, and we've got, we use saloon rear wing repair sections, which yeah. obviously have the door cut out oh, I in see. here. But we can put the whole rear quarter on then yeah. and keep this swage line. Right. And then we'll just roll up a new section to go in here and to join oh, down onto the sill. Okay. Not pretty. I can't get over that. And I also like the way it's already trying to go it's, rusty. It's to it can't already. help itself, can it? Better news on the other side. Though. Much better news. Around here, with all Looks the like a Jaguar. Off. Look at that. That's amazing. We've got a lovely unblemished panel here. Um, well, well. And of course, that can't be original. No. <laughs> Surely not, no. Surely not. Uh, if, we, if we look up here, we can see what's happened. It's had a quarter panel in it at some point in its life because right. there's a welded join across here. Okay. Now the factory panel is joined across here underneath this lead work. But you can see where it's had the panel in there. They've done a lovely yeah. job fitting it. It does fit nicely all the way around. There's no obvious signs it's had a quarter panel. No. Until you get the paint off. So they've done a nice job. Brilliant. Just a tiny bit of corrosion coming through on this corner that we can, yes. we can carry out a localised repair. Right. Um, but on this side we've, we've pushed yeah. forward. We've had the outer sill off. Yes, I've seen the pictures of it removed and there was a nice inner seal wasn't there the inner seal was nice there's a bit of a repair done at the back which yes. wasn't meeting where it should do so no. we cut that out made good the repair in there and now we've got this seal in place here yes um what we have uncovered in doing all of that yeah. is something a little bit unusual yeah there's not very nice what's been going on <laughs> here oh dear old cars old cars indeed the, this lower panel here is the radius arm mount and the jacking point. Yeah. Which, when you look at it from underneath, it's a little bit flaky, but it doesn't look too bad. No. Normally there's big holes all around here. It all looks quite sensible. Yeah. But it's not until you look inside I there. I couldn't believe this. That yeah. there's an unusual sort of top hat steel section yes. welded to the seat pan. Yeah, this, this thing here. Yeah. Now, because this panel has been patched over and is so corroded, and that's the jacking point and lifting point, yeah. if you put any pressure on there, it's going to collapse. Yeah. So, so some cunning fellow has come yeah. up with a cunning plan of, of putting a little stop in there, which prevents that well, from happening. Yeah, so it hits that and that adds the strength, but it yeah. is a mess behind there. I couldn't believe what was behind there. And there's further damage here. Let me pull some of this. Yeah, it just hasn't got the strength, isn't it? So you we're going to add the strength there. It's split all along there. Yeah. And it just shows you, we thought that was pretty solid before you unpicked that bit and saw what was behind. Real lesson. Certainly from the outside it looks, it, you know, it, it, it's not factory, it's not no. brand new, but it's solid and sound, but no. cunningly disguised. Yeah. Um, well, I'm really pleased that you've discovered it and you can repair it, so that's great news and the seal's terrific. And then you've done the repair here as well, haven't you? Just a little, a little, little repair bit. there in the bottom of the outpost for the yeah. outer sill to repair uh, yeah. to weld to. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the other side, obviously, we, we, we're doing as well. Yeah. What we do with the sills when they go on, um, they corrode because it's a box section. They get right. moisture inside there. Certainly the factory cars weren't really rust protected at all, so they just sweat right. them. But what we do is before we put these on, um, the new cells, we use our anti-corrosion epoxy primer, a couple of coats of those. Oh, okay. So on the underside of this, you've got the epoxy primer, but I've got the other cell right. here to go on the other side, right. treat them both at the same time. Oh, that's not painted normally inside then, like that's, that? It's normally got a really thin, um, uh, thin coat. That Does feels it? different. It's thick. Yeah. Um, again, this is an oval stuff. It's anti-corrosion. There's a process in doing it. There's three yeah. coats on there, so it uh, prevents any corrosion coming yeah, through. I bet. Now you've got the panels over there. We do. So this has all come back from the. This what was it? Soda back, blasting. This has come back from Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as usual, a lovely job. There's no damage to any of the panels as a result of the blasting. Yeah, uh, if you amazing. use the wrong material, they come back so warped and damaged. Oh, really? it, it does a lovely, lovely job. There's an orange square mark there. What's that all there about? Is. That's a little bit of a head scratcher, really. This steel has got incredibly thin here and just blasted through into minor holes. It's in an unusual position. Um, 
possibly it's had a leaping cap on there before and have welded it up. Has to be. I can think of no other reason why that would be holes there. It's right in the centre line, isn't it? Yeah. That's that's someone's had a mascot on the well, a leaper on the front. Has to be. The yeah. doors at the back there have been oh, a, yeah. a, a pleasant surprise. Really? I mean, you know, they're rotten. <laughs> yeah. But not in a bad way. They're not they're pretty solid for they're, Jaguar doors, they're aren't really they? Good Jaguar doors. Um, when they were on the car they looked a lot worse with the blistering and the bubbling, so we wow. weren't expecting a lot. Wow. Um, so if I just flip it up. You're showing off now, I know yeah. how heavy they are. They're not too bad when they're empty. The right. mechanisms in there right. are a nightmare. Right. But the, the inner flange here is all good. Um, yeah. Once we take the outer off, there will be perforation damage to, to the lip in there. Right. But all of this is, is really good, which is, which is quite unusual That's mega. for these. Um, in both doors are in similarly good condition. Is that had a repair then? Is that what that is here? That's lead. That's oh, lead. Really? So underneath there, we know there's going to be a lot of corrosion along there. It's yeah. just been filled over with lead. Wow. Um, but again, with this door, it's remarkable. Yeah, you can see that the outer skin is in a bad way, and this is the repair section that we oh, put I in. See. But say for a few minor little holes along here, what the inner one's good. It's a bit worse at the back here. Yeah, but as coupe doors go, <laughs> they're pretty. Good. That's pretty good. Well, it's great to see. I mean, amazing progress since I was last here. Oh, you've got one more to show we me. We have one more. Odyssey you wanted to show. to show me? Yeah. Okay. There's no, there's no previous sign of this whatsoever. There's a hole. There's a hole in the um, roof. No previous signs of that at all. There's no bubbling in this area. There's, n there's no sign at all. The cabin was dry. Yeah. But that had a large area of filler over the top of it. Right. Um, very peculiar. How there, weird. There's, there's no answer to that. It's just a Jaguar. Is that when it had the vinyl roof, it, they bubble up like that, do they? Or they do. With the vinyl roof on here, they do tend to oxidise quite a bit, and they start to pickle up. Right. Um, but this is a thick bit of tin they use on the coupe roof. Yeah. To make allowances for the fact there's no. Pillow. Oh, it is quite thick. It's metal. quite a thick gauge of steel on the top here. Right. So. Um, I, oh, okay. I would imagine it was a pinhole that was just starting when they when they skimmed the roof over. Yeah. Um, and it's just grown. Oh, so weird. There we'll we have go. to have the headlining down, which we're doing anyway yeah. for, the, for the deadening. And we'll get that cut we'll out. Get that out. And then just put in. I'm just looking at this. I'm surprised how solid that looks actually. Yeah, yeah. As we were saying back in the, yeah, in the first video, really. it's the stress fracture along yeah. here. Um, it's just starting to pickle up but it's not rotten at the area where the crack no. is. It's purely down to the stress, the stress. of the cafe. That whoever the driver is, has been increasing the stress in it, hasn't it? <laughs> so I'll tell my lad off. That's that's cool. That's really good to see that. I feel we're, we're getting there. We know most of the secrets now. Yep. No more to be revealed. So now you've got to do, turn it into this green. How are you going to do that then? We're going to call in some other people. Yeah, okay. See what they can do. <laughs> Gerald. You've come over from there to see what you can do with this. So you're from Noble and you've got a clever bit of kit in your hand. Yes, so we have our spectro photometer. Yeah. Uh, so it's a five angle camera and it will take five different pictures of the color of the really? paint to right. actually create a formula. To right. Match it, the, the best match that it can. And why, why has it got this black in it? You're saying that's a pearl or something. Yeah, so it's probably, we'll be able to tell because this will give us a formulation yeah. of the color and we can actually see which pearls are in it so it's right. probably got a black to uh, green pearl effect in it that changes in the sunlight right so we will determine that very soon is it all done in one color then i mean when you paint it or is it a multi-layer well this will tell us that too what would it yeah all the answers so uh it could be one layer um and it could be a three-stage color yeah so you'll put a base color down so just for instance like if this were a three-stage um it's different with every color yeah but you know you put like a green maybe a green metallic down first yeah and then you would put a uh, what we call the the tinted clear coat over it um so it would have the pearls and such in it right and that's what would give you the effect so it's a transparent layer the, the third layer right um and then we'll give it that that, that, uh, color. that effect so, yeah. you've got a green tick i see on yes there. So, so that means we're good to go so right now we'll take it you're to the, the machine yeah, right to the excellent 
and it'll uh, give us a formulation. Wow, that's some mix. My goodness. Why do you need so many? You're never going to paint that many cars at once. So they're all individual tinters. Oh, I see. So you will blend, yeah. be a blend of paint from all those. Your, your colour probably take a little bit of paint to take yeah, those. Yeah. No. So when when Jared's scanned, they'll bring up the formula. Right. And tell you how much of each one of those goes into making that colour. Oh my goodness. We also yeah. have a big colour box, which is by manufacturer. So right. these are. Uh, sprayed out color chips. Oh my. Oh right, for all the colors. So, you know, if you had a Yeah. whatever, you know, it'll tell you on the system that the color what right. the color chip is so you can take that and take it to the car and see my if goodness. it's going to be a good match or not. My goodness. Oh, and all of these are actual actual painted. Actual painted. Hand, just hand look at those. Yeah. Yeah, so oh, we I have a, our, this. our nucleus discover color program. Um so we've plugged the spectro into it and yeah. we downloaded the five pictures that we took and it will now take the five pictures put it into one and give us a formulation okay, that's a brilliant i'll just see you've got the classic sort of colors and special effects all there yep. so, so this is our dedicated classic car line there um, and we are the only uh, paint manufacturer in the industry that offers a dedicated classic car restoration line God from start dear. to finish because those yeah, you're working almost blind, aren't you? Those. Oh. So we so we can either take and send a piece of the panel to Poland to our color lab and oh, they'll match it. Yeah. Or we can scan it with the spectra. And yeah. Get, get the best possible match. Do we have a result then? Yes, we do indeed. Excellent. So it's brought up uh, our color here, so we can so see. You know it, what it, I'm looking at? Oh, there's all the mixes there. Yeah, so you can see here where it broke down everything that's in in the color. Right. I um, mean, you can look like on the Blue, green, red, pool. on the graph. You know, yellow you want. Pool. Yep. So it's got you know, golden green. Oh, that's the percentage. Right. Yep. Formula so there. Form so that's, the that's biggest the is yellow black. Yes. So that's the percentage of the formula, and then this is the amount in grams. Right. So you, and you know you can see um, yeah. what colors are there, and no, then we brilliant. have a graph here that shows you know how close the original is to the corrected. So you okay. want these two lines to be as close together as possible. Um, oh, I see. That is two lines. So I didn't yeah. see that. So the black line, yeah. the black line is the original, right. and the red line is the corrected. So you can see that that right. stayed very true very. to the okay to the color. So using this magic box of tricks here, you can do a sample of that, and we could have a look at it. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, wow. so we can mix up a, a small amount and do a scrap part. That, and yeah, see see how close it is. That's yeah, brilliant. Absolutely. You could do that. Yeah. Okay. Good. We'll mix it up. Okay, so that's all the in. This is all the color, so now yeah. you can see that it doesn't doesn't look like much there. No, it doesn't. Uh, but then once we start, you can see that as you st as you go. Oh, good lord, it does change. Well, well. But has the hint of green and the metallic and oh, that is that's it. That is it. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. right. So what you're going to do now then, put solvent in. Yep, so we'll get, make sure we get it nice and stirred up because even just the colours on the side of the cup can uh, affect the, the colour match. Yeah, and this is, so you're going to put it on here and you were saying on that machine, it was this is a P3 base yes. primer isn't it? And you really wanted P4. Yes, yeah, so for, really we want it a little bit darker than that but so yeah. Considering you want it to be, you don't want it to be as black as that. True. It will that will lighten it up a bit, right. so it'll work okay. in our favor for you. Okay. Right, you've got the color. Yes. Right. So this is that's that's an interesting green. So what you've done then. He's slightly taken a black out, haven't you? Yep. Out of that. That is good. I don't know if you can see. There's my configurator colour. I'm going to blow this up a bit on the iPad. That is pretty close, isn't it? I'll, I'll do it better on screen, but to my eyes, that is very, very close. I think we've got the colour. It's a slight hybrid, isn't it? It's a minus all green then, Aston Martin Q colour. Yep. But with the black not back. Yeah, so it doesn't change the black, it stays a solid colour. It, it, it's the green that you saw. It is, originally. on the configurator. Yeah. That is it. 
yeah. I just think it's a more interesting colour than going like the Project 7 sort of green. I wanted that idea that it had an olive colour within it that is sort of 70s. It this could is a, be the 70s. It, it is a 70s, 70s car. I'm really chuffed with that. That's so right. And that will actually go slightly darker. If anything, it's marginally tiny bit too light. But that'll do it with the base colour, won't it? That'll go from with P3 with dark, to P4. With a darker primer on there, that'll, that'll turn that yeah, down a little bit Yeah, using the P4 more. instead of the, th the P3 primer, yeah. That's brilliant. Well, there we go. Yeah, I think we're, we're done. Perfect. We have a colour. So the first bit you're going to spray down is the engine bay. Engine bay. And that's why we need to do this today. Yep. So we give it a test. Well, there we go. That's been ace today. Thank you very much, guys. And um, well, I hope you've enjoyed that video as well. Just looking at the XJC, where we've got to, and we finally have the colour. Mine is all green, Aston Martin Q colour. Very happy with that. Thanks for watching. Keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.